Hey y'all, you listen to the Gary Owen Podcast. <laughs> Hashtag get some. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Gary Owen with the Get Some Podcast. You can l- listen to this on iTunes. Just search Gary Owen, hashtag get some, or go to my YouTube page, youtube.com backslash Gary Owen com. Uh, shout out to Timeless Recording Studio. You can follow them at, at Timeless R Studio on Instagram. Uh, they, they've opened up the doors for me, so I got to give them a shout out. Uh, I want to thank everybody in Chicago, Illinois, a.k.a. the suburbs of Schaumburg. Last weekend I was there. Uh, we packed out the whole weekend. And this weekend I'm in Memphis, Tennessee at Chuckles Comedy Club. And then July 28th, I'm in Tucson, Arizona at the Desert Diamond Casino. And then first weekend in August, I'm in Buffalo, New York. Stop the hate. I'm at uh, Helium Comedy Club in Buffalo, New York. Now, I got a special guest today. Uh, me and this guy go back 2003. Yeah, 2015 years. Uh, this is where I met him. Uh, I got asked to do a comedy show for University of Southern California Trojans. It was a football team. And they were getting ready to play. Who were you playing that year? I think Oklahoma. Oklahoma was a national title game? Yeah. Okay, so they're getting ready to play Oklahoma in like a month. This was their break. Because, you know, the way college football is, it's weird. Like, their last game is like the last week of November, first week of December. Then they got a month before they got to play January 1st or 2nd. So this was right before Christmas. I get this call. I go to this, this I don't know, this compound in Malibu. I, this guy, I guess the guy that is a, is a supporter of USC and a booster, he started... Um, Public well, storage. I public think. storage. That's it. Yep. And the guy that called me for the show was Al Callens. The guy that drove OJ Simpson in the white Bronco is the one that contacted me from the show. And I don't know how he got my info. And I get this phone call. It's Al Callens. I'm scared to say no. To- you can't. You can't. <laughs> like, you can't. So I go, uh, I go to this show and there's a couple comments to go before me. And you got to keep in mind, only people at this show was University of Southern California's football team. So you got a bunch of guys between 18 and 22 years old. Then you got coaches. Then you got some trainers. And that's it. So it's literally like 100 dudes, maybe a couple girls that are that are interning or on the training staff. But it's basically all dudes and young. The comics before me are bombing. I mean, they're eating it. And I'm sitting here in the back like, I ain't telling no jokes. I was like, I'm just going to go up there and start bagging on them. And I don't know their roster like that. So I'm just looking at guys that I can make fun of by their looks. And I don't know who's who. I I mean, you obviously know, knew who Reggie Bush was, knew who Matt Leiner was. You know the big name guys. Mike Williams was, uh, he was there. Uh, So you knew the big star players. But you didn't, I didn't know any offensive linemen, defensive linemen. But this is where I met this guy. His name's Frosty Rucker. Ex Cincinnati Bengal, ex Arizona Cardinal, ex Cleveland Brown for a hot second. Uh, currently with the Oakland Raiders. Yes, sir. But he was on. He was. He's still a defensive lineman, but he was. He was on USC's USC's team. So I just gave you my perspective from what happened that day, and I start going in on everybody on USC's team, and it got to the point where they were coming back at me just as hard. And so I'm like, it's like literally 80 dudes against me. And I'm trying to get them. But they're, at one point, it was coming hot and heavy. Yeah, it was like the lunch tables at school. Lunch table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. It, it wasn't the dozens. It was the 24s. Because I was getting it from every angle. And I'm trying to keep up. But it became like this legendary night that if you was there, and there's no film and there wasn't any recording of it. If you was on USC's football team in 2003-04, you still talk about that show. To this day, you still talk about Off it. Top. Now, what did you guys think was going on when you was on your way to the, the I call it the the drug mansion? Because it looked like one of them Scarface mansions that Man, this huge. place was at. It was at. nice, though, right? I wish I could get an invite back. How about that? Right. Um, we knew going into it, whatever is in front of us, we were going to laugh about it. So we didn't know if we had a comedian. A comedian. We didn't know if we had circus animals, anything. Coach Carroll's a fun coach, right? Oh, yeah. Coach Carroll was a coach at the time. Yeah, yeah. so... We knew going into it, something's going to be fun because he wouldn't waste our time with any, can I say bullshit, with any bullshit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't waste our time. So we get there. 
And like you said, everyone was bombing. They didn't know what they were walking into. We were bu a, a bunch of savages out there. Yeah. And <laughs> like you said, the jokes are coming from everywhere because the whole team was funny. Coaches, trainers, everyone was funny. Everyone had a joke. So it was a great environment. And then Gary came up to bat and he was prepared. Like you said, he was the last one up. So you were prepared. And that was the best thing because you didn't go out there first and be like, oh, crap, I had yeah. a whole script. Yeah. Nah, player. Nah, <laughs> we're going to get you. So everyone's going back and forth. And that night, Lee Webb and Gary Owen had one of the best head to head back and forth matchups I've seen. Yeah. Lee Webb was a backup running back for USC. That's why when he says his name, you've never heard of him. Uh, he's a nice guy, but it was funny because he, I remember I had on this velvet looking shirt. And I had matching loafers. And he went in on my outfit so bad. But what I remember was he gave me a put down that wasn't a put down. To this day, I'm still like, that wasn't a put down. So Lee Webb, I invite him. There's no stage. It's just, it's just this, it's a, it's a tent. And they put this big flooring down on the tent so they could feed everybody. And then they had coaches thanking everybody and stuff. And then the comedians start going up. So it wasn't a stage. We just went in front of you guys, right? And Lee said, that's why you look like a swole-ass Justin Timberlake. And you guys went crazy. And I go, that's like a great compliment. But that's that not was a put 15 down. years ago. We were just on our guy's side. Right. But, I was like, but I'm looking at you guys like, I'm, I'm literally yelling at the team. Go, that's not a fucking put down. Hey, that's a great compliment. Up, but you had to come back with something. That's why <laughs> You had to come back because no matter what you knew in that truth, it was still funny to everyone else. Yeah. So that night was legendary. So then they asked me back the next year, right? So I come back. This is 2004, 2005 season. Uh, who'd you guys play that year? That was Texas. You you wanted to say it like that? No, no. Oh. Texas was the year after that because I wasn't allowed. I did a video. So you did 2003 before we played Michigan. Michigan. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that was for the Rose Bowl. 2004. So, yeah. That was for Michigan. Then the next year I came back and I brought Kevin Hart. Yeah. I brought Kevin Hart before you guys played Oklahoma. And that's the when it got good. So I tell Kevin, I warn Kevin. I go, Kevin, don't do jokes, dude. Don't do jokes. I go, just start bagging on them and I'll come in and finish up. I said, but they're going to try to come at you. And when, I, when me and Kevin got there like an hour before the team buses pulled up, we were playing basketball, shooting basketball, and I remember telling Kevin, I said, look, man, I, I know you're funny, but don't tell no jokes, bro. I said, these guys are coming. And when they, when you guys got off the bus, dude, there was dudes heckling me, like, dude, we ready? We ready? Like, dudes had shit written out. Like, the Asian dudes? Shout they, out to all the boys at SC for doing that and lighting Gary's ass up. Yeah, whatever. That was a good try. That was a try to lighten up. Okay. Yeah, but the you're two right. Asian dudes was the funniest. The Tings. The Tings? Yeah. What happened to them? They're doctors. Well, they're do I yeah. figured as much. The, the Tings. There was two Asian dudes, and I don't know if they were twins or they just looked alike. Twins. But they came, and they came and showed me. They go, Gary, we've been writing. So I was like, all year? We've been writing all year? And so Kevin goes up, and he tries to tell jokes, and it's not working. I'm looking, I'm like, I told him, don't tell no jokes. And then you guys, somebody, I'll never forget, Somebody yelled from the back. Somebody said, why does that sidekick look like a VCR on your hip? Killed and them. then gloves was off. Kev went, oh, you guys got jokes. You guys got jokes. Yeah, and guess, then the Kevin got trial by fire. Oh, Now he's in the mix. It's back and forth with Kevin. They're some of the best jokes I've ever heard in my life, Gary. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin got lit up pretty good. Yeah. Because he's smart. He, listen, he's short. That's obvious. He's small. He was young. And you guys were ready. Well, I don't think he was as ready. Yeah, he didn't know how aggressive it was going to be. Yeah. It, it, He's like, oh, they got Joseph's a couple. No, the whole crowd is ready to get yeah. you. Yeah, and you guys have been bagging. You know, like any sports team, you guys bag on each other all day, every day. All day? As comedians, we're used to one. It's usually one heckler. This is like a room full of hecklers. Do you get them kicked out when that happens? Now? Yeah. You know, it's funny, man. When you get more popular as a comedian and you start making... You start making more money and charging for ticket prices. You don't get hecklers that much because they want to watch. People the show. pay to see a show. You get hecklers in the beginning when you're at bars and nightclubs because they're just people just showing up like fuck it. I'll just bag on them. You don't get them <laughs> taking the shots in the back. Yeah, yeah. Now if you get a heckler, it's one. It's usually alcohol induced, and sometimes you got to let them. Out. I try not to kick a heckler out immediately. I try to let them, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. 
But it gets to a point where... What's the final straw? Uh, when they're just talking to talk. And they're losing, clearly, but they won't stop. I, last time I kicked the guy out was last summer in Marco Island. But he yelled the N-word on the way out. And I got him fired from his job and everything. Because then he sent me a Facebook message talking about I'm a monkey-loving N-word, blah, blah, wow. blah. And he got, you know, he was at my show, Marco Island. He turned his back to me. Like, he literally turned his back and was talking to his table. And I said, hey, man, you got to you gotta be quiet. And then he, he wouldn't shut up. And he wouldn't stop. So I said, dude, you just got to go. And then he got kicked out on the way out. He yelled, wow. you know, you N-word lover. And I was like, did he just say what I thought he said? And then he sent me a Facebook post. So I reposted the Facebook post. And then on my social media, his name was on there. Man. Adam. They was coming at him. Don't I was like, Beyonce stuff. got the beehive. I got Don't the jeehive. The, the jee- <laughs> <laughs> they was coming at him. For real. That's a new one. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. So uh, we'll, we'll get into your career in a second. Let's finish up the USC. So then I come back. And Kev, I mean, Kev ended up getting in a groove and doing his thing. He went back and forth pretty good. Then I went up and finished up. But I was I was extra prepared that year because I knew everybody's stats. Oh, yeah. you. you I knew you everything about the team. We couldn't hide from it. Right. Well, you guys were the. I mean, you guys were the only team in LA. You guys were like rock stars back then. I mean, USC was it, you know. And then the next year, they said I I couldn't do it for whatever reason. The NCAA, I couldn't get paid. Something happened. Where I well on to come. So you could tell me what happened before the Texas game. Huh. I did a video and I sent it to Coach Carroll because I said, "Can I at least do a video Just for the tell guys?" Me you're gonna play this video and some audio when I get done telling my side. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Okay. It's on YouTube right yeah, now. The video's got, on YouTube. Those people got to go back and, and look at yeah, that. That's I posted it. You're on it. Oh, you killed yeah, yeah. me. But I, what I was told was Coach Carroll told the team, I knew you guys was out last night. I told you guys we got cameras and then, you motherfuckers are fucking this up. And then he played the video where I was like, what's up, guys? Yeah, it was a Christmas one. Yeah, Christmas. Oh, yeah. he killed us. The, so, you, the you're, so you're sitting in the meeting room and everyone yeah. thinks they're in trouble? We're thinking we're getting chewed out. He, he rarely does that. So when he's real serious, you know, he, Coach Carroll has his bat. I don't know who he think he's scaring with the bat, but it gets kind of intense when he has the bat around because, you know, you got to protect your team. He starts hitting on the table and whatnot. You know, one of the only times you're like, oh, all right, man, let me, let me, let me tighten up. And then uh, he plays the video and it's your face that comes out and everyone just <laughs> lost it. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> the, the back and forth for the years and then to, you know, get the video. You couldn't be there and you explain why in yeah. some BS way. Who knows? And then that you was just a great ran video. in on us because we couldn't even come back. So you had to sit there and take it. And you went through down the line, everyone's name. You got to mine. I was going to tell you earlier when you introduced me to say my name again because you said Frosty Rucker. <laughs> well, I don't know why you say it like that. <laughs> Frosty Rucker. And he's like, it sounds like you're parched. Yeah, I'll never forget that. And uh, no, it's good times, man. And, there's only so many times you can take an L when someone's making fun of you, and we had to take the L because we couldn't come back. Right, but I w- I wish I would have been there to do it in person. But they and then and then I was able when you when you gr- left. I don't know. Did you graduate? Yes, I graduated. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you finished, <laughs> this is gonna get good. Let's just keep. When, I don't know if you graduated. But when you graduated and then got drafted, I kept coming back. Like oh, for did you? three you or four back? years. Oh. Like I was there through the Josh Booty. Ray Maluga. So you kept killing them. those days, but it wasn't Isn't that funny. It wasn't as good as you guys because you guys. I mean, you were giving it back, and then the team was still good, but well, it wasn't like rock stars. We you know? won national championships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was you know Mark Sanchez and Josh Booty and and Garrett. Those so you, guys. Yeah. Were there. I mean, Mal, I mean the, the linebackers was good. Yeah, good like, players. Maluga, Cushing, Rivers, uh, Matthews. The, the linebackers were good, yeah, but it, they didn't have the personality like those first three years. But it was still good, and I was, and it never failed. I'd still bring comics. I brought Rodney Perry one year, and and then I brought I brought Jay Phillips, and I was like, don't tell jokes. People, don't I guess listen. comics think like, nah, I'm, my shit'll work. No. But I'd always tell them, don't tell jokes. I go, these guys just go in. It's our culture, oh, and man. I reach her. And Coach Carroll one year gave me dibs on people. He oh, told yeah. me one guy got caught jacking off <laughs> in the dorm. And he was like, yo, we've been bagging on him all year. So I literally went on stage and he showed me who the guy was and wow. I gave him like all the butter. Oh, <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the and the I'm and glad the he and on everybody my was team. eating dinner. So I gave him all the butter. <laughs> That's so disgusting. <laughs> I said, you might need that later. And everybody's like, how the hell do you know that? Coach Carroll. Mm. Let me tell you the the one of the coolest things Coach Peach Coach Pete Carroll did. 
So one year he was getting honored by the city of LA for all the for all the work he does with the gang in members. In the yeah. He, like does he would go into gang infested neighborhoods. A white dude. At nighttime. Right. And yeah. talk to like young kids and, and the gang members and try to create some kind of peace. And um, so the city of LA gave him an award. So I'll never forget, uh, I don't know if it was Al Callens or Pete, no, Pete's assistant contacted me and said, Pete wants you to roast him a little bit and be the comedian for the evening. I, I can said, do Great. that. <laughs> so I said, all right. So the 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 organizers of this event called and was like, uh, yeah, just be at the Beverly Hilton at this time. I said, I don't, I don't live in LA. I said, I need, I need to get flown in. I need a hotel room. And I'm not, I wasn't even asking to get paid. I just want to do it for coats, but I'm not going to lose money. Right. So they were like, um, no, no, you're not getting anything. Like, that's it. So I went, so I called Coach Carroll's assistant back and I said, look, I really want to do it, but I don't live in LA. So I just, he goes, Coach Carroll asked for you. He said, so they're going to do it. So I said, I called back and I told the lady, I said, I want you to call Coach Carroll and tell her why I can't be there. Right. I got an email with my flight itinerary with the hotel. And this is what kills me. It was at the Beverly Hilton. Like, it's at the venue. Just give me a room at the Hilton. That's what they end up doing. But it was so funny. So now the event happens, right? So I am I go up there. I'm bagging on Coach Carroll and some of the other celebrities in the audience. The next day, the Los Angeles Times were in this big article about Coach Carroll, right? It said, and the audience was entertained by Michael Bolton. Wow. The Debbie Allen uh, Dance Theater, Will Ferrell, and uh, it was one other person. Completely left me off. Forgot you. And when I tell you, I was the entertainer. Well, look at the other names. Well, I was, but I know. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. Michael Bolton, okay, <laughs> sang a couple songs, slow songs. Um, Will Ferrell did a video so he that there. hit in the beginning, but then it fell flat. Like when he first got on screen, he was in a sumo outfit or something. It hit, but then it just it. Sh- if it was five minutes, it should have been two minutes. Got it. Right. And then. Um, so you can say that. I will never. Right, but no, I mean, that. that's what I'm, I'm going to what the audience happened because it, it was funny. And then it just it went a little too long. And then uh, and then Debbie Allen's dance troupe went up and no knock to the kids. But all right. For that audience. <laughs> I don't you know? even know. So keep going. Right. There was a bunch of gangbangers. And, and then there, here's what's funny. There was a bunch of gangbangers in the back. Supporting PC. Yeah. And they, they invited them, and like three of them was in wheelchairs, been shot, you know. And I go up there, right? And so it's 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 corporate America, and then gangbangers in the back. When I say when they announce me, <laughs> it was silence, but the gangbangers went nuts in they the knew back. What I was. That's our dude. That's our dude right there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never forget that. They laughed at everything where everybody else was cool, but I could tell they didn't know how to take me because they go, is he he just going on Pete. Like, I act like the shit he wasn't, wasn't oh, no big deal, and right? Pete didn't tell them what was <laughs> yeah, going to happen. Yeah, Pete was dying in his family. And I, I just remember, I said, I told, I, there was kids in the audience, so I had to be clean also, which which tempered it. But I, I remember my closing joke was, uh, listen, guys, I want you to always remember you can do anything you want in life. Don't let your circumstances dictate what you can be in the future. I said, if you want to be a pro football player, you can be a pro football player. I said, and if you don't have the athletic ability and you're too slow or too short and it's just not working out for you, look at Coach Carroll. You can go into coaching. <laughs> but you could Dead. still be a part of football. <laughs> Dead. He loved that one. Yeah, that was the end. Like It was like, some, you could be a coach if you're not good enough to be a player. But I just remember the next day, the LA Times ran an article about the whole event. There wasn't a snippet of me no, at all they cut all that out the the rumor i heard now this is the rumor and i don't know if it's true was that the event organizers wanted billy crystal the event organizers and pc wanted, wanted me you're his guy and so they were like well we didn't get our guy and if it wasn't me it was somebody else they had to bring in but but that was the rumor i heard like you wasn't their choice and coach carroll said no nah, i want i want yeah, gary i mean by far because when I called his secretary, she gets she said, "Okay, you tell them that this is oh, she, she wants you." Oh. Okay, that, that's all she said. Because I, I told her I said I want to come. She goes, "Well, Pete asked for you. That's why the call came." So I called him back. I said, "I want you to call Coach Carroll and tell them why I'm not there." It. <laughs> when I tell you, I never got a call back. I got to eat, and it was the driest email. It wasn't like we Ooh, looking forward to your hot. performance. Ooh, everything. Hot. It was just name, flight information, hotel confirmation. That's it. Yeah. And I never heard and from him. And don't ask for me. Right. And this is what's crazy about this is what's crazy about Coach Carroll. I still have his email. 
And I don't try to bother him. I mean, NFL coach, he's busy. When I tell you two days for the Super Bowl, when they played the Patriots, I just sent him an email. I said, hey, coach, I know you're busy this week, but good luck, man. I'm rooting for you. I got an email back in like five minutes. Like, appreciate it, man. We got to get in touch or something like that. I was like, don't you have a game? Right. That, I mean, it was like so quick. That's, you know? You're his guy. It was like this year. It, here's the thing about the Super Bowl, man, is this year, Randy Moss asked me to come roast him because he did a private event because it was in Minnesota. He's ex-Viking and, he, right, and right. he was going in the Hall of Fame. So I get to his event and uh, uh, the owner of the Patriots shows up, Robert Kraft. Yeah. Bill Belichick stopped by and they said Brady was coming, but I, he didn't stop by. But I was like, the game, mm. this is Friday. The game's Sunday. And they just stopped by to support. But I'm like, that's what they, it's funny because in your brain, you think Super Bowl, you don't have time for nothing. But guys like that, they're probably like, I need to do this yeah. to be cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But that tells you a lot about Randy, too. Right. You know? Because I guarantee you, David Terrell, they wouldn't show it up. <laughs> Ex-Patriot. <laughs> Where do you go with these things, man? David Terrell was a wide receiver of Michigan. Oh, I know. But this is what I, this is a random David Terrell story. Uh, the Rookie Symposium. I'm watching ESPN, and they had all these guys come in and talk to Rookie Symposium. They go to David Terrell's hotel room. He goes, look, that was cool, but I got these Kooji shorts, this Kooji sweater. And I went, oh, he ain't going to make it. <laughs> he had all the hot stuff. I literally was like this. Oh, he ain't going to make it. Right. Now, did you, when when you got your, did you have to go through the Rookie Symposium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went, went down there. It was in San Diego. So uh, I was on Southern Cal soil, so I was cool. That's a great city. That's, my, that's yeah. probably, but that's, now you still live in Cincy? Yeah. All, off season, all off season? I live here. Why? It's safe, man, for safe. me. Why is this? What do you mean by safe? Not, not according to First 48, but. That's what I was thinking. No, yeah, I don't live there. Safe, what do you mean? It's safe for me. It's not LA. It's not the hustle and bustle. I can sit on my porch and chill and stay out the way. Do you live in Kentucky? Or I live Ohio? in Kentucky. You like, know how. You know that's how what I is. think. A lot of people don't know this. Guys that play for the Bengals, 90% of them live in Kentucky. Yeah. Why do you guys all live in Kentucky? I don't know. I think because right when you go into downtown Cincinnati, there's no homes and stuff. You're in a high rise or whatnot. And it takes a little while, a while to get to a house. So on the Kentucky side, there's no downtown right there. So it's already homes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So you can plug and play. Okay. I don't that's know. my reasoning. You know I don't know. I, mean? I just Me know either. every time I, I meet a player and they, if they ask me to stop by or something, it's always in Kentucky. Right. I'm like, did not, any of you guys live in no. Ohio? It's close to the airport. It is close to the airport. Uh-huh. Did Now, when you got drafted and you first got to Cincy, did you live in a hotel? Did they put give you like, oh, temporary housing? Oh, right there housing? in Covington. Right you there in Covington. Hotel? Oh, yeah, right under the, uh, the train tracks. What hotel was it? The Marriott, right there uh, by that McDonald's, right there in Covington. Right off oh, the highway. Oh, yeah, right okay. In the cut, right there in the cut. So, because I remember talking to, I don't know if you remember Rudy Johnson. Was it? Was oh. Rudy here when you was here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rudy J. Yeah, Rudy said, this is the funniest thing. I said, I went up to him one day. I said, Rudy, I heard a rumor was you lived at the Hampton Inn your first two years. Then you lived at the NBC Suites your third year. Then the fourth year, he, he started balling and got, got a deal. And he goes, Tom Change. And then he said, he said the N word, Tom Change. I was like, motherfucker, Tom Change, yeah. motherfucker. That's all he said. That's <laughs> all like, he always said. All right, good meeting you. <laughs> Club Rude J. He was at one of my, my shows. I said, Rudy, I heard you lived at the Hampton Inn. Then you moved up to the NBC Suites, and now you got a house. Time change, motherfucker. <laughs> that's quick with it, though. Quick with it, though. Right. But I was like, that's yeah. all he said. Yeah. Shout that's out what a lot Rudy of people J. don't. I, I, I'm like, you, when I asked you to do my podcast, I said, you want to film in the morning? And you said, I'm shipping my car to Oakland. Yeah. So, got to go to work. Got work to do. So, you just have how many cars do you have? Two. Two. So mm-hmm. one stays in Ohio the whole time, and the no, other goes both wherever you go. Because you've been in Phoenix. I mean, yeah, Cleveland, I was in Phoenix for up. five years, so I, both my cars were out there. Did you get a house in Phoenix? No, just rental. Just rental. Hmm. Yeah. You didn't like Phoenix? I do. Phoenix is one of my favorite cities, man. It's too off the chain for me. Too off the. Oh, okay. Now it makes sense why you live in Cincy. Oh, you're trying to slow it down. I've been trying to slow it down. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can for read my between line. lines because there's there's a, a certain time period you got. Where a bluffer, where you think you can do that stuff, and then that's go away, and I've I've exceeded that. So you obviously. you soiled your oats. Yeah, by the so time I start getting gray hair, I had to shut it down. Right? Got it. I you can. Know? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, you get I the grays. It's over. The party is completely over. I know. A, I know quite a few ball players that in the back of my head, I'm like, they should be in a small market. Yeah, they flourish in a small market. I know an NBA guy. I'm not going to name no names, but. 
Whenever he played on a small market team like like a like a Portland or Milwaukee, got busy. He balled, and then the minute he was on big city teams, he was he wasn't playing the same. Clearly, it was probably because because he was going out. Oh yeah, stuff like that. My whole thing is it's not so much the going out for me, you know, because I played in you know Phoenix and we were pretty damn good the time I was there, but uh, it's just having so much to do. You know, when you have options to go to different restaurants, different sides of the city mm. and all these other things. And here it's kind of limited in the, in the sort. You, you know what I'm saying? Yes, <laughs> I, I was trying to give it a little hype because I live here, but no, I know, like it's limited. So it's either downtown or you can get the outskirts or something, but nothing like Scottsdale and, you know, all those neighboring neighborhoods and hiking and all the things that are good. But it, they can also be a distraction when you're trying to focus on job at task, you know? So this is so this is where you're going to stay. 60-year-old Frosty Ruckers on the front porch in Kentucky. <laughs> that just sounds so... Um, right? Is yeah, that, maybe. That's where you see it? It's a good possibility. Yeah. I, I, always, I don't have no beef with it, though. I don't you know? either. Because I, I can go all those other places if I want and come right back and sit down somewhere. I always I, se- I, I can't tell live people, there. You can't live there. No. Yeah, I, I tell people that when they always ask me why I live in Cincy. I always say, uh, I'm a comedian. I'm on the road every week. Right. I, I see every city as it is. Exactly. I can live wherever I want. Yeah, I could see that though. Your reasoning though, I don't know. I I like I like dining options. When you're talking about yeah, dining, yeah, but I, I have to watch what I'm eating too. Well, as for you, because you're working out now. Yeah, we, but I that's seen the you thing. In the gym the other day. California, a lot more healthier options too. If you look at that, because it is it is more, you got to search out here. A, a, a lot more traffic that you're sitting in the, the car and stuff. So then you can want something to eat, and you can slide over to La Brea and hit up Roscoe. Or, you know what I mean? You gonna yeah. do you know things like that? Or it's just too much. Too much for me. Okay, let's go back to a young Frosty. I'm there. I stayed there in the offseason. Tustin, right? Yeah, yeah, Tustin, California. Where is that? Right by the airport, Orange County Airport. Right by Orange County. Because every time I see it, I go, I have no idea where that's at. Right I've never heard of anybody else so coming from like Tustin. So it's like Irvine, Santa Ana, Tustin, right there. Anybody else famous ever come out of there? Uh, Cuba Gunn Jr. went to school there. His freshman year in high school, and I'm taking it. He went to the high school you went to? Yeah, Tustin High. Tustin High. Yeah. So when people say Tustin High, do they go Frosty Rucker went here or Cuba Gooding Jr. went there? Frosty Rucker went Frosty there. Frosty Rucker. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm always funny. It's always funny to me when people be like, yeah, uh, Michael Jordan went to my high school. I'd be like, no, you went to Michael Jordan's high school. Absolutely. I said, because if he dies, they're going to need to the gym after him. If absolutely. you die, they'll be like, oh, boy died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, boy died last mm-hmm. year, man. Who? Remember him? The dude in the math class. Yeah, remember went to the, the top corner? of the rope in gym class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always, that's always funny. People he didn't like, have he a belt. You know school. he kept doing that? Yeah. He didn't have a belt? That guy. Yeah, <laughs> that guy. So you at, you at, is it Tustin High? Tustin High. What's the mascot? The Toros? The Tiller. What is it? The Tiller. What is that? It's a farmer. Because you know the Till? The Tustin Tillers. Yeah. Is it like going to the children of the Don't do that. Things? No. I hope no. not. What's well, a Tiller? I don't even know what a Tiller is. Yeah, pretty much what you just said, but I didn't <laughs> want it. It looked bad on TV. The Tustin <laughs> Tillers. Did you, who, who, okay, you went to USC. Who was number two? Number two, what? Like, if you didn't go to USC, you were get you weren't just getting recruited by USC. No, um, I actually had a recruiting trip to go to the U that I Miami. Yeah, but I got persuaded. I actually started in Colorado. I went from Colorado State to USC. You started at Colorado State. Yeah. So then my I first year there, I sat out, and that's the year Carson Palmer won the Heisman and got us really on the map. You know what I'm saying? And that was Pete Carroll's, I think, third year. Mm-hmm. So we were just cooking, and then I went home. Decided to go home. My mom made me, pretty much. Did USC want you before you went to Colorado State? Yeah, they recruited me. And then why'd you choose Colorado State? Well, my grades weren't good, man. That was the reason? Uh, absolutely. Huh. I was thinking if you could ball ball. No, because like that's a private school. Grades. You know, everything has to be a little bit different USC to get in is? there. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's a private oh, school. Oh, that's right. Because the Pac-10, the only public school is Arizona State, yeah. right? And All, UCLA. And UCLA. Yeah. So that's like open enrollment. Yeah, because Terrell Suggs got mad at me one night. T sucks it because uh, he got mad at me a few times in his life, but <laughs> he's the reason I played defensive line, by the way. And I'll tell you, Terrell that Suggs, he's the reason he got mad at me because Ray Lewis used to do a Ray Summer Days in Baltimore, and I'll again, I was comedian. I'm such a sports fan. First year I did it, Ray was like, "He's coming back because right. he knows football." So I'm, I was bagging on guys and stuff, and then one night we was out after the show having some drinks, and Terrell Suggs walked by me. What'd you go, say? I go, T Sizzle. I go, Arizona State. I go, the only Pac 10 school that you don't even know. And what I say, I said, you don't even know tests to get in. Everybody can get in that school. And he goes, You just call me stupid? And I was like, Where did you get that? 
<laughs> but you kind of did. But I didn't. I was but, just like, I was back on the school, not him. But I thought he would laugh about it. But he took it serious. Oh, it wasn't funny. At all. Wow. And then here, fast forward, uh, 2010, I'm in LA at a party, and he kicked me out of his uh, VIP section. Dead serious. He's seen you and was like, yeah. you got to go. He got to go. You got to go. And I went, here's what happened. I'm thinking it's squashed. He ain't going to remember. Years right? later. It's three years later, right? He goes... He walked by and he had sunglasses on the club. This is exactly what I said. I said, T-Sizzle with the stunner shades on. Why? And he was like this. He goes, what'd you say? I go, T-Sizzle with the stunner shades. I didn't say what. T-Sizzle with the stunner shades on. He goes, he's gone. He's out. And I went like this. I leave my hands up. And the security guard came over. And I I know, I know being in nightclubs, this don't fight it. You're going to lose. Right? So I was like this. I just walked away. Right? I'm good. Why? This is... This is the spring of 2010. Why did that summer the Ravens hire me to roast in that training camp? Did you lay it off It was him? a wrap. You went for it. Oh. Because he kicked you out. For the throat. Wow. Yeah. Wow. For the throat. And wow. it got to the point where he was starting to get upset, but the whole team was laughing. So you had to keep going. So they was like, you can't, if everybody's laughing but you, you just got to start laughing or you look like a dick. Because he said, he said, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> he said, at you? yeah, in, in the roast. He goes, hey, man, you better stop leaving me alone. Because I, I had talked about that night on my in my act. I had talked about him kicking me out and on radio shows and stuff. So he said, I mean, you got to stop talking about man. You fucking up my pussy game. I said, your face fucks up your pussy game. <laughs> and I'll never forget. I said, uh, I said, and then we've been cool since then. Like, he ran it. He ran into me at nightclub and I got shook because I go, oh fuck, he might still be mad. And then he came up and then he was, we've been cool here. ever since. But I said, uh, I said, you and Joey Porter are the only two that United Way won't use for uh, for their ad. They want radio commercials because oh. once they saw your face. And I said, you're the only two that never, uh, your baby teeth never fell Why out. How would you? Okay. I went in on his teeth a little bit, but he got his teeth fixed. So he's good, right? But he yeah. saw me at a club like a year later and I literally, my stomach dropped. Because I was in Baltimore. Now going to beat you up. And Ken Hamlin, he used to play yeah. for the Cowboys. Same and uh, he was playing for the Ravens. He, I met him out. And we wasn't even at a nightclub. It was like a rooftop lounge. So it was real laid back. Everybody, you could eat and have drinks. They'll throw you and off. And he walked in with like four dudes. And I later went, oh, shit. And I told Ken, I go, I need your help. I go, you got, you got, a, uh, you got to like be a buffer. Like you was going to do something? No, just say, he's my guy. Don't hurt him. And then I saw him make eye contact like this. Like, like Is that him? Him. And I went, oh shit! And then I literally came up like, dude, let's squash it. I'm sorry. <laughs> and you then just tucked your tail. He was good. He was like, yes, no, nah, man, we good, man. You know, finally, goes, I know, I know, you're just kidding. That's what you do. You know, and I'm like, that's what you do. Yeah, because you're not the only guy I bagged on. But yeah, thank God for Ken Hamlin that night because I literally got, I started shaking like, Ugh. now what's your T Sug story that made you want to be a D lineman? Well, hey, he's a he's a legend. He's still playing and at a high level, so I hats off to him. Um, he's one of the guys that I admire, just so I wanted to say that. But I came to SC as a linebacker, and my year I was redshirting, Coach Carroll made me play defensive end the, the game we were playing um, Arizona State, and I had to play T. Suggs. And, you know, I thought I was all-world middle linebacker. I was just that dude. And he's like, just have fun. You beat the tackle and we had a really good tackle and he's like I don't care what moves you use because T-Suggs is a beast he can so this go is in practice? Some, yeah so I'm just having fun I'm juking the guy and doing all I can do literally after the, the game the next week I was in a whole different meeting room I was with the defense alignment I was like hold on hold on so he was like scout team yeah so I'm one of those players you know what I mean like hold on I'm gonna call my mom I didn't come here to do that <laughs> <laughs> and then I, he was like, look, 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 I think you got a future here, which you showed this week. And I had to, I had to trust in PC and he got me to where I'm at, but it was T Suggs, Emily T, T sizzle with the shades in the club. So you might, uh, if that, if there wasn't a Terrell Suggs and there, you weren't playing Arizona state, it might be frosty Rucker, Montreal Alouettes, no, middle linebacker. Never. You might be in the CFL or, or, or probably not. Now, I, remember, I believe in my my stuff. That, no. Now so. listen, I T Suggs is, if not top five, it's incredible lineman I've ever seen play. He's, he's incredible. He's a beast. Yeah. And I'm glad we're cool now. But I remember him. I remember his his last year at Arizona State, and he was in. I think they were in the Holiday Bowl, and he was dominating. He was treating them guys like they were in junior high. Oh yeah. I think he had like five sacks. 
Dude, and there was and there was charges at the game like he's better than us. Like they interviewed a couple of the charges. They go, no, he could be on our team right now. Right now, you know. And that's when I noticed him. So when they drafted him, I remember when the Ravens got him. I go, damn it, because I remember he came out the same year as, as Carson Palmer. Yeah. And Kyle Bowler was the quarterback. And I remember I was doing some work for the best damn sports show on Fox Sports. Wow, that goes like back. I go on there and do this thing called the White Report. I just described what the white guys did this weekend in sports. It was a very short segment. <laughs> I'm looking it, was it up. Garen with the white report. YouTube. And uh, yeah. And what I'll tell you about the white report in a second. But I remember Terrell Suggs came on and I was there that day. And he, they, Kyle Buller was with them. And they said, okay, Kyle Buller or Carson Palmer. He goes, my man here, Buller all day. <laughs> you said it? No, he said it. Terrell Suggs. Oh. That's his teammate. They Neither of them played a game yet. But, but he, had he, said, to, he had a side Yeah, he was like, my man Bowler all day. Cal Berkeley, he goes, dude. I was like this. <sighs> yeah, I was like, didn't you sack him a whole bunch of times in college? Yeah. Right. So, I, yeah, I did this thing on the, the best in sports show called The White Report. And I did it a few weeks. And then I'll never forget, uh, it was part of this news report. And the newscaster got fired. He got in an argument with one of the producers. And I wasn't even there. And so they called me. They go, we don't have nowhere to put this thing because he it was like it was like Saturday Night Live. Like he would oh. kick it to me, and I'd, I'd be like, "Hey, this weekend in, in white sports." This so you happened. had to improv it. Yeah, so I wrote all my stuff, and then I ran out the teleprompter, and then uh, they go, "We got nowhere to put you." So him getting fired, I got fired. Just they, had, like that. they had nowhere to put the white report in the show. Oh, you know just what I mean? Got out so I was like, like, "Dude, that. the guy got us both fired." Then because they, cause they just never called back, they was like, "That was it." I wonder what happened. I don't. I wasn't there. They said he got in some kind of argument with one of the producers on the show, and they fired him. And then, I it was gone. Whoa. And I was like, appreciate it, guys. This guy's like Roseanne. Roseanne does that, and all, the show gets taken away, and they don't think about all the other people that got laid off because she made a, a a racist comment. I don't know. I don't know what happened with that. But uh, so now, now you're with the Raiders. Yeah, you're 13. And how are you guys looking this year? We'll be good. We'll be all right, man. I, I you like have no house. idea. I'll tell you why I know you have no idea. <laughs> why you say it like that? I just, Eric, I just ran into you last week at the gym. And, uh, oh, you're really going to tell this story? Yeah. So I'm sitting there and Frosty, I hadn't seen him in a while. And I was like, yo, I want you to come on my podcast, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about that. And I see, you know, a dude over there is on the Raiders, right? There was a dude working out that was on the Raiders. And Frosty goes, what? And I go, he looked at me and goes, dude, I, I've only been like, OTAs. I don't know anybody. I stick with the D linemen. I don't know the offensive guys and the DBs. But the guy you got released this. by the Raiders, and that's why you didn't know him. He got released at OTAs. Well, that's why. And I was like, but I just here's the thing: as a naive fan, you go to this private gym. It's a it, it's a, the guy. Um, the guy only works out uh, athletes and me. You know, cause yeah. I guess he's cool with me. But uh, you know, you just assume the NFL guys know each other. You just no, assume. No, and I'm in a whole nother like generation. <laughs> like, that is true. A whole decade before, you know. It gets it's like that with comedians. Like people just assume I know everybody. And I don't know can. the open micers in Milwaukee. No. I, I don't that's two Milwaukee references in one episode. I don't know the open mic dudes in Des Moines. Ooh. You know? That's so Iowa, you just right? don't is that Iowa? That's in Iowa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just assume we know everybody. Uh, now I want I want you. This is what I want you to break down, because I I've I learned this. Tell when me. you get when you're in the NFL, right, and people call you for tickets, how many free tickets do you get per game? We get two free tickets. Two, but we have to two free, but they're not free because you have to pay the tax on them. That's a what's veteran. The what's the tax? I don't know, but you got to pay it. And so, when you see guy with ten tickets, so you he's just out of know pocket. Guy hit, yeah, he's out straight of up. Straight up, you know, and that that's what that's why I I don't ask I, a lot of times I don't ask guys for tickets because I, I I when I found that out now I was uh, the only time I was a little salty was when um Hushmanzada and Ocho Cinco was with the Bengals uh, Hushmanzada had a suite and Ocho had a suite so I would just hit them up for one ticket yeah, I'm like yo in. let me let me get in yeah. and they all when when Ocho left and TJ left I go God dang it my tickets my tickets are gone. And this this is the Bengals front office though, because I'll have my publicist call the front office if I want tickets now. And um, but I don't want I don't want to say that Carlos Dunlop and his crew always leaves me t- uh, a ticket because I usually come solo to games. So they always take care of me. And then if I show up, they get mad if I don't call them. Tiffany, his assistant, be like, "You didn't call us. You was at the game. I right. go, I didn't want to bother you. You know, I know his family's in town. 
But uh, I call the Bengals. I've asked the Bengals front office two times for tickets in my life. One was against the Raiders when Palmer came back. Ooh, when he was with the Raiders. You guys annihilated game. the Raiders. I went there, but that was a big game. 8,000 empty seats. And the Bengals said no when I asked for tickets. So, and I don't want to say the Bengals. It was the guy that my publicist got a hold of. And she called me like dumbfounded. She goes, Gary, um, they said no. And I went, huh? Now, keep in mind, I've called, I've called numerous NBA teams, numerous NFL teams. Nobody's ever said no. no. Now, I'll know where I stand by where my seats are. Like got there's it. some some teams I'm way up top. You just got some tickets. Some teams I'm on the field, front row. Where do you want? I'm in the suite. I mean, it just depends Ooh. on the team. You don't know who you're at. Right. But nobody's ever said no. The only team was the Bengals, and that's, I'm and that's your team. That's, and I've I've roasted them. Like wow. I went in. Like I roasted them in 2005. Went in the training camp, roasted them. Yeah. And I rep them hard. Well, the guy the guy that said no. I think his name was last name was Sales. Brian Sales was his name. Couldn't tell you. Um, he's in the front office somewhere. He said no, and <laughs> he found out I was going on NFL Network that Tuesday. Did he make it right? So he they tried to they tried to get a hold of me. They tried to give you the team. Like like yo no they was like he wants to talk to you. You want to pick the first? Pick? And I was like I'm good. Like I'm good. I don't I don't need you. I, I and I literally I bought tickets to the game and I bought tickets front row right behind the bench the Bengals. But I paid extra. I said I'm just going to buy tickets. So I went and I paid. I sat behind the Bengals bench and like I got there an hour for the game. So you and I remember it's like pu- public, um, you know, uh, reporters were coming up. Some of the players that were hurt were coming up, and I'm just BSing with them because I'm right in the front. Right. And then I'm and they're like, uh, I was telling them the story, like, hey, who the hell is this sales guy? Right. And they the was like, you should have called me. You should call me. And I was like, and then last year, okay, Marvin Lewis got roasted. And his secretaries called me and asked, hey, can you help us write jokes for Marvin to get roasted? And I said, okay. So I I, uh, I help him write a roast for Marvin. I don't, I don't get paid. I don't get nothing. Just, right? I just did it. I'm thinking I got to end. Right. So last no. year, I, call, I, I called for one game. It was the Texans. It was at a Monday night game or Thursday night game. It was one. I think it was Monday night. The Texans were playing the Bengals. And I said, yo, it was the only game I was – I only made three games last year. only game I was going to be in town. Can I get tickets? No, they came with some. We already gave our comps out, huh. and then I. So I again. I, I called. I called Houston and got field passes. I called the Texans. Wow. Called because I knew people in Houston's front office. They see yeah, we got you. So I call them. They leave me field passes. Then Ocho and TJ's getting honored. It's the fiftieth anniversary. They say, "Man, come sit in the suite." So I go up to their so suite, sit live. with them. You all the way live now. And then the secretaries come in that I, that said no. And I was like, I could have sat in this suite. What the guy? I know these guys. You know what I mean? I'm not some fan that's going to be looking pictures and freaking out. Right. So they, her face just went, hush, hush. Are they doing? But I was just thinking, guys, you got you got an advocate for your squad Don't here, know. man. There's like, not many out there. You got Nick Lachey, and they take care of Nick. Oh, yeah. You got, you got George Because he's going to sing for him. Huh? He's going to sing the National Anthem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to do that part. But let, let me walk around the stadium, see who gets stopped. <laughs> hey, 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 uh, the Budweiser's over there. Yeah. You put the- I, I, talking about the Raiders. Now I went to a Raider game last year, Live. and I had never experienced the black hole before. Oh man! And they offer me the guy that uh, that I knew with the Raiders. He offered me a, a sweet ticket. And I go, no, I want to be in the mix. I want to be. I want to be amongst the Raiders. So it was funny. So I didn't know how hot it was going to be though. So it was September. It was hot. They were playing the Ravens. So I'm, I'm baking now. I go, I, I, okay. So I call the oh, guy. I go, all black. I go, can I, can I get up in the club section real quick? I <laughs> cool off. So I called him. So he, he said, yeah, you just come up there. I'll tell the security guy you're coming. So the guy that let me into the club section was just the guy at the door. Right. You got to have a wristband on. I go into the club section. All of a sudden there's this old lady. Oh, and I, I always say, people always get, get on me because I say what color people are. I just like to give people a visual. Old black lady. She, was, she goes, where's your wristband? And somebody I go, no, I'm, I'm friends with like the Like an auntie office. or a granny? Uh, auntie, but she's somebody's granny and somebody's auntie. Okay, I got it. Like, this was her job, and she was taking this shit serious, right? She goes, she wouldn't let me answer. She goes, where's your wristband? I go, I'm a guest of that. Where's your wristband? I go, but I'm a, she goes, you gotta go. Like, it was that fast, right? She calls the cops, because there's cops at the Raider games, right? Really? These two cops, this white cop and black cop started to walk towards me. The white cop didn't know who I was. It was like the hood looked out for me. The cop's coming towards me. As he's coming towards me, people started to recognize me. Mexicans and black people, right? Oh, the guy. The cop couldn't get to me. 
When I tell you it was about 20 people wanting pictures, he could not physically get to me to kick me out because they didn't see him. So they're coming and I'm like this, yeah, I'll take pictures. Oh, now you got <laughs> happening it up. Oh, I'm, let's get another one. Bad yeah. angle. So he goes, he goes, ah, and he's looking at me. And I, and then finally, after five, ten minutes of taking pictures, he walks up and I go, he goes, man, I was trying to tell her. I go, uh, so I, I made up a name. I said, with the front office, they just invited me out. I said, I told him at this comedy club in the Bay that night. And I was like, so I just came to the game. I said, that's why I didn't have a wristband. I said, I just walked up here. And he goes, he goes, no, nah, you good, you good. And then, uh. Then the lady goes, why isn't he out? And then the cop had to tell her, he's fine. He's good. He goes, man, I'm supposed to have my wristband. And then she walked away. <laughs> but I remember, oh. it was, I, I mean, it was out of a movie. It was like some Selena shit because the cop was coming, but he wasn't being a dick. He was yeah. just like, he didn't really know what was going on, but she was so great. He's got to go. Wow. And I mean, he could not get to me. It was 20, 30 people that stopped him from getting to me. Right. So- all right, That's prediction wild. this year. Raiders record? I think we win. I can't say that. I don't know. I can't say that. Let me get to two. Over, under, nine. Nine over, wins. Over. Okay. Over. A lot, Have of you seen- a lot of shakeup in our division, if you look at it with uh, new quarterbacks in Denver and Kansas City. That's that. That's Yeah, that is big. A lot of yeah. people are picking the Chargers like to, to go far. I didn't see it, but I guess I mean that Bose is a beast. Is he that good in person? Yeah, yeah. He's a monster. He's nice. He's nice. Yeah, he's yeah, a monster. He's nice. His whole family. His whole like family's that. like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but I, so. but I, I think uh, a Thanksgiving conversation is not getting too deep at the Bosa household. No. Ooh, it was a good game. Those, it was. Imagine those like body slams and stuff that they've had. <laughs> it's like the Gronks. They literally are the Gronks without the press yet. It's coming because let me tell you something. The way you know Bosa is Spicoli from Fast at Ridgemont High. Love that show. You know what I mean? Yeah. That is literally he's he's that's Joey Bosa. I can't get enough of him hearing him talk because it's so surfer. Oh, it's just like what's up? Like he shouldn't have been Ohio State. He's he should have been at UCLA. He's a bro. Yeah, he's at a USC. Bro. Yeah, yeah. A there's a, a lot of cake stands mm-hmm. at Ohio State when he was there. A lot. But anyways, nothing wrong with that. Nah, nah I love. Yeah, I yeah, love him, man. Wrong with that? I've done that. Nah, those those are the best guys because there's there's such a. Uh, a uh, like an innocence to him, yeah. Like you don't, you're not. Just do it, man. He just, uh, dude, I was just, I'm playing ball. Yeah. Like he's the one that his life will not be incomplete without a Super Bowl ring. He's like, right. oh, I'm good. He's just, he's cool with it. No, I'm fine, man. It's fine. Uh, I heard the kid buzzes his ass and works hard, and it shows when he plays. Though I like watching this film. His little brother's at Ohio State right now. Too. He's a monster. I heard the little brother's better. Than, we'll see. Than him, we'll see. <sighs> we'll see. You know, it's a lot of time to get there, but. Where's his dad at? That's all genes. I don't know. You when you be, got brothers like that, like bro, like the Gronks, are, it's clearly a gene pool. Right, yeah. yeah and then the all. dad putting the weight room in the in yeah. the basement. Right. You know what I mean? That's all genetics and DNA, right, man. Right, yeah. I actually uh, was talking to uh, Chandler Jones about that, about, you know, because all three, you know, his, both his brothers are, one's a Super Bowl champion and, you know, Bones Jones and just... Oh, you talking about John Jones? Yeah. Yeah, his brother's it's Chandler Jones. Chandler, I played with him in Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. Where's he at Arthur now? played, and he won Super Bowl with Baltimore. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so, you know, they don't get as much press as they, they should, but he was just telling me little things that his dad did. You know, it wasn't a weight room, but, you know, had them wrestling and doing things like that and getting their core strength, and all three of them are just badass dudes, man. God, my son's 17. I started too late. Damn it. <laughs> On the road, Gary. <laughs> On the road, Gary. <laughs> he did open up for me, though. Yeah. Hey, I seen that. How yeah, he's do? on YouTube. Yeah, he's do? funny, man. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, you he's see yourself he's, in him or is he his own guy? He's his always quirky. Oh. My son's quirky. Okay. It's different. Okay. It's almost like um it's like if he was an athlete, he'd be playing a different position. Got it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you're the best three point shooter and he's down there dunking. And he's a people. center. Yeah. You know got what I mean? It. That's what it is. He, I mean, granted, he's got it. But I, you know what it was when my son started opening up for me. Well, he's only offered me a few times, but he was always on the road and he was bagging with my guys. And you're like, and you can do him. this. Like he was in a back seat and somebody would be like, what do you want to eat? And he'd be like, ask your mom. This is like at 14. I went, what? And Love like it. he was, and then he'd just like look up. Like the shit eating grin on his face. Like <laughs> I was like, and we're all dying because you don't expect it from a 14 year old. Ask your does. mom. It's in him. Right. And then I got a I got an Asian guy that's my opener now, and he's my web guy. And he goes, he'll just go off on him. What are we eating today? Fried rice? Oh, like, he'll just so go just up. Going back yeah, like, on. like right. what, what are we going for lunch today, Fried Rice? So he's got it in him. He's got it. He's quirky. He just, I think he's not uh, motivated right now. <laughs> we'll get there. 
You know, he's, he's like finding a, his way. This is the time to find your way. If he was an athlete, I would say he's a D one athlete with a D three work ethic. Oh, that's how I describe you, him. You got to teach him. You got to be around to teach him. But I'm, you're working, I'm, dude. He's on the road with me. I think he's gained some respect for me being on the road because I think he thought Dad just hung kicked out. it and went to the club. But and he never saw me working. Oh, so now he's been on the road with me. Goes, watching oh, you write it out. Dad and, be bossing people around and gets mad if shit ain't right. You know get what mad I mean? At home. Oh, nah. My daughter made fun of me because she goes one time. My wife said, you know, I, I had to whoop my daughter for something. And she said, I went up and went, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she said it was the lightest girl, tap like, baby light. Girl, you... But it was my daughter. Yeah. My son, we've got, I've got him in headlocks. Like, like I did, I did a head and arm with him one night and flipped him over my shoulder and had him down. I go, you, you think you the know? boss now? You had to let him know? You think you the boss? Okay. And then he acted like he was going to run away. He got up like. You ain't going. I said, you ain't going nowhere. You get Plus, some we snacks. live in a safe neighborhood. Go I go get some snacks and lay down. <laughs> right, right. Where are you going? Yeah, I'm going to the Sonny's. He'd be at the neighbor's house. <laughs> at their pool. Get yeah. over here. Yeah, he's in the pool. Yeah, you run away from my house into a neighborhood. It's like this. Oh, no, <laughs> he's funny. running the mean streets. Right. <laughs> With spring he's meadows in a carpool somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> no bus stop. There's no hood. Like, where are you going? Right. Oh, hey, the neighbors are calm. Like we saw Austin. Yeah, you didn't yeah. have a skateboard though, so he's fine. He used and, Johnny's. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, look, I appreciate you coming on. I love man. Thanks. Uh, you got me a gift. Yeah. You want to yeah. grab the gift? Yeah, I got you a. a I, mini. I, I had the USC hat posted this time, but I got you this because you're my guy. Thank you, man. Yeah, the yeah. mini helmet. And I haven't signed it, so here's the thing about the mini helmets, though. What's up? Is I only got three. I got Bengals, the Cardinals, and the Raiders. Three of your teams. Oh. And the, the who was, I don't have a Browns one. Yeah. Was it the Browns for, yeah. What year was you with the Browns? Uh, I think 2012. You said you think. Exactly. Was it as dysfunctional as people say? No, it's not. As, okay. No. Well, I mean, right when I got there, they sold the team. So, yes, it was. Just didn't have the talent. No, they got good guys. Now they, work hard. they They got some talent they now. The squad, and we should have been talking about that. Whoo. The Browns got some talent. I'm gonna we play them this year too. And I, hey. the Raiders play them. Yeah. Oh, that's right. In Oakland. That's right because the AFC North plays yeah. the AFC West. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So the Bengals play the Raiders, the Chargers. Yeah, I'm gonna make some yeah, road trips this, this is year. Live, man. I'm actually. In, you got a ticket if you come. Well, I'm, the, let Maybe me tell you the Raider game. Text me. You're right. The Raider. What about away games? You got to get two tickets. But your seats are so no. shitty. Yeah, they're shitty. I always, I don't ever ask for road tickets from a player. We'll figure it out. You know what it is. <sighs> Not like he can't pay for it. Anyways. Let me, let me tell you something. My, my, let me tell you a great road ticket story. Is I always said, I always, when I when Hushmanzada and Ocho singles with the Bengals, I call them back and I come to a game. Well, there's one game. I had both my sons and my cousins. So I needed four. So you knew it I was a stretch. Them. You knew it was like, I can't call nobody. So I called Edrin James, who was running back for the Cardinals at the time. Oh, Cardinals came oh, to play yeah. the Bengals that year. And this is right. I think it was like Kurt Warner's like first start. So it was like Linus rookie year. It was the year before they went to the Super Bowl. Got it. So everybody thought Warner, Warner was washed up, and he balled against the Bengals that game. We kept going so high. My son goes, when we going inside? He was like five years old, and I go, oh, we're not going inside this game. We're sitting outside. He goes, what? He started doing this. He goes, he goes, he goes I'm rooting for the Cardinals. <laughs> like that was gonna give me. He goes, I'm rooting for the Cardinals. He was he watched the whole game like this. Man. <sighs> wasn't God. crying because it wasn't nothing to cry about, but he was so mad. That's funny. And we stayed for the whole game. I, I it was freezing. But you and I him. stayed for the whole game to spite him. Yeah. You like, spoiled motherfucker. Yeah. That's why I looked at him. You spoiled motherfucker. Well, spoiled people but we like kept that. going up. I was like, no, I didn't know the stadium went that high. <laughs> You're in a blimp or something. But when you get up there, it doesn't seem like bad seats because no. you can see the whole field. Yeah, but they just look like Tecmo Bowl. And yeah, like the. And growing up, that's the only place I sat. I I I might go to. I listen. Growing up, this is how big a Bengals fan I am. Growing up, the only thing I asked for every birthday was Bengal tickets. Every year, I said, I just want Bengal tickets. I want to go to one game every year. That's and cool. so <laughs> that's reasonable. Classic. My mom. It's preseason. Oh, so there's always preseason games. Free tickets, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it was way up top, but I didn't care. I was like, yo, and it seemed like they played the Packers every year. I saw them play the Packers twice growing up. When you were growing up, were you the type of guy that would bring snacks with them or buy them there because they're expensive? How would you do it? Oh, we didn't have any money. I just starved. Yeah. You just didn't even eat. We didn't eat. Oh, yeah. got it. I, mean, I would get a hot chocolate. Ooh. I always thought the stadiums had the best hot chocolates. Yeah, we, we didn't never eat. Never had one. We, I never, I always felt bad. Like, because if I went with my stepdad, I definitely wasn't asking him for shit. And my real dad was too busy partying. 
at the game. I was like, he might come over and like, hey, you want a bite of a hot dog? <laughs> I, I'm like, over here, I can't get my own. My uh, dad would offer me a bite. Here, man. <laughs> like this. Why can't I get my own hot dog, Dad? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> he literally buy one and then let's flip it. Yeah, there you go, yeah, man. You, buy, uh, uh, you, you good? Move the you, relish over. You nine. That's funny. You don't <laughs> like care. Nurse, You're all right. <laughs> well, we used to me and my dad used to always go to barley corns after the game, though. And I, I remember that I thought they had the best, best wings. wings. Someone told me that they had the best oh, wings. Oh, and 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 um potato skins. There okay. was one downtown on the water. It was right. It was a boat. Barley corns. That's what we always used to go after the game growing up. It was great memories with my real dad when uh, the the Bengals game because he would he would take me. He would have so, fun. He was fun. He was fun. He was a partier though. But you know, my dad had me so young. He was eighteen. Oh, so, so I'm going. I, you're I, going. You got to realize. Him. You're yeah, going. like I'm nine years old going to the game. With my dad. This fucking guy's twenty seven. When Jason Hoes at the game. So, like literally, I saw him like going after girls. Like at the game. Like damn, baby. <laughs> I'm like. My dad. Yeah. <laughs> or he'd say, Hey Gary, sit here. And he asked one of his friends to like watch me. And, and now looking back on it, he was trolling. Yeah. Trolling for girls. Yeah. He's walking around the stadium, like, yeah. He's hey Gary, you good? That's when he'd buy me snacks. Yeah. When he went to go look for hoes, my dad'd be like this. Yo, what you want? Popcorn? Yeah. Want soda? I'll, like, I'll yeah, be right I'll back. Both. I'll Dude, be right I'm, back. And I was content. Yeah. I was the happiest kid ever. You didn't get your like, popcorn in the fourth quarter. It, I'd be looking at my dad like this. Get any numbers? <laughs> yeah, how can I help? Right. <laughs> all right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, best of luck this season with the Raiders. Thank you. Healthy. That's the main thing. Because, yes, man, sir. you guys go through it. And I always tell people, man, football players earn every nickel yes, they get do, paid. Because this shit they put. I've been to practices, and mm-hmm. I've been up close to games. Right. I, I, when fans say, I'm fucking greedy and ain't worth that shit, I go, dude, try getting hit they don't by a 300-pound dude. I have no idea. That can move. Just think about it. The practices are all-star games, too. Right. Um, I had always a, being evaluated, you know? And I, you got I got hit by a guy. Best. Let me tell you something. In high school, I got hit by a guy who ended up at Ball State. And I thought he was the greatest football player I'd ever seen in my life. Smoked you. And I was like, he's going to Ball State? And like, Ball State was huge then. The, in my mind, that dude was going to Miami or, or UCLA or anything, Oklahoma. Anything. Yeah. Ball State. And I was, I thought he was the biggest freak of nature I ever seen in my life. Ball State. I was like, what? The what are these D one athletes a like? A little Man, that's why I say NFL players earn every nickel. That's why I'm not mad at Le'Veon Bell. No, right Get now. your money. Get your money when you get, get it, money. man. It's such a short. Like you're an anomaly. 13 years in the league. That's Here's not normal. Here's the thing. I'm gonna put this out there for these younger guys because you know my time's dwindling away. This is year 13. Don't sign five year contracts. Just sign a one year deal. And just make them pay you. If they want your services, they'll pay you. If not, you're out of there. And you can do it again while you're before you're 30. Just keep signing smaller deals. Smaller deals. Smaller deals. Because they can. Because isn't how the NFL works? And you could tell me, you sign a five year deal, but they cut you year three. You don't get paid year four and five. No, it's only your guarantees, and usually your guarantees are at the beginning of it. So like that's I've why said, guys hold out, right? Yeah. For the for the but they for the the sign a bonus deal, is a big but one. then. Who knows? You turn 30, oh, we got to go a different direction. You only play three years of it. When you could have played a couple years at one-year deals at 15 and $10 million and stuff like that. Yeah. And hit them. That's Darrell why we just did it. Darrell Revis? That's what I kept seeing. He Smart. kept following the, find, signing those deals yeah. like Tampa. And then, right. Hey, They're one-year deals and just hitting them every time. Because I always say when, you, when ESPN you reports, juice. and this is how people that don't know, when ESPN reports, he signed... He signed for five years for a hundred million, but thirty five guaranteed. I said, so he signed for thirty five million. That's it. Yeah. yeah, the sixty five million, and yeah, that ain't guaranteed. No, that's if you brought a Super Bowl and something else. But sometimes yeah. getting a Super Bowl, it wasn't in your control, or yeah. not getting there ain't in your control. Right. So get shout your to, sign. Shout out to Russell Wilson. Sorry. Whoa. Sorry, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Had to get it there. Again. Coach Carroll could take the joke. Yeah. You <laughs> see, oh, put it on him. Yeah. Nah. All right, man. I appreciate you coming out, man. All right. This is Gary Owen with the Get Some Podcast. Frosty Rock, you want to shout out your social media? Uh, At The Organic Frost. Check me out. Family dude, Lakers, fanatic, and uh, go. So you're static with the brawn being there. Raider Nation. We we tried to say goodbye five times. We'll put your, uh, we'll put it on for you. Okay. We'll put a graphic. You got a person for that? Yeah. Because right now, my fans about how you spell organic. 
Oh, don't say <laughs> I that. know my fans. <laughs> I'm one of them. Don't say I can spell. No, no, my no, fans, a lot of my fans are like, okay, O-R-G. <laughs> we'll put the he graphic said up it. in he the said link. It, but All right. Appreciate you. <laughs> All right, Frost. Thanks, man. Got it. If you want to listen to my podcast, just go to iTunes, search Gary Owen, hashtag get some.